Hello, I'm Anna Johannes, Paralympic bronze medalist and global advocate for disability rights. Thank you for joining me for a special episode of the award-winning podcast, A Winning Mindset, Lessons from the Paralympics. The Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games will get underway shortly, and coinciding with the Games is the launch of We the 15, a campaign which aims to improve the lives of 1.2 billion people with a disability. And that's what we're focusing on today. This 10-year campaign has the power to change perceptions, change opportunities, and change lives. And I'm so excited to be part of something which has made such a positive impact already. Joining me today is someone who knows more than most about this campaign. Andrew Parsons is the president of the International Paralympic Committee and perhaps has the busiest job in sport right now. He and his team at the IPC are working with organizations from around the world to deliver We the 15. So, Andrew, let's jump right in. I gave a little bit of a teaser of the campaign, but could you explain exactly what it is? Yeah, the We the 15 campaign is a 10-year is a campaign that we are launching now five days prior to the opening of the Paralympics. And its aim is to use the Paralympic Games, of course, as a catalyst, because it's the only global event in the world that puts uh, persons with disabilities center stage. So it's a series of, of actions. It involves also media, broadcasters, different uh, organizations around the world, sport organizations as well. So we have been uh, joined by the Deaf Olympics, Special Olympics, and the Invictus Games Foundation. Again, put the light into the fact that we have 15% of the world's population with a disability, more than 1 billion persons with disability. So every four years is not enough with the Paralympics. We believe that uh, the world needs to change the way it treats 15% of its own population. That's the aim of the campaign. Sport is a catalyst. It's a way of bringing all these organizations together. We have really high hopes uh, that we will be able to change the world or help change the world through this campaign. The first time I heard about this campaign, I was inspired and ready to get involved however I can. So to kind of back it up a little bit even before that, what, what was the inspiration to launch this and use the Paralympics as the catalyst? Well, I think, uh, to be honest, I am inspired in, uh, in the athletes and in the stories uh, of the athletes and how sport helped them uh, to change their own lives and to inspire people around them. When I joined the Paralympic movement, in, when I was a bit younger, in 1997, I always wanted to use sport uh, for a greater good or for something that it, a purpose that is higher than just, in brackets, uh, mainly because you're an athlete, uh, gold, silver, and bronze. So why not, as we are the Paralympic movement, why not put the games and put our own movement at the service of 1.2 billion people uh, uh, out there, and not just only, again, in brackets, our, uh, our own athletes. So why not do that? Yeah, that's so incredible to hear. And I mean, we're in the middle, we're still trying to get out of a global pandemic. We're a year later than we're supposed to be for the games itself. So why now launch a 10 year human rights campaign? As a movement, as games, we are mature enough, we are relevant enough out there to, to put, let's say, the weight of the Paralympic Games at the service of a campaign like this. And why now? Because now it's so necessary with the pandemic. We have seen how the pandemic has disproportionately affected persons with disability at a global level. I'm not saying only in developing nations, even in advanced societies, we have numbers that show that how persons with disability have been more affected in the, the number of deaths in some nations. They show the need of a campaign like this. They need to show uh, the need for us to understand that we need to bring back persons with disability to, again, to the center of the inclusion agenda. We need to put some light into that question and why not use sport? Why, and, and sport as a catalyst, again, as, as, let's say, something that will make this campaign be known uh, in the four corners of the world. You know, the games have more than 4 billion uh, uh, viewers around the world. So why not, you know, let's say, expand the reach of this campaign using exactly the Paralympic Games. Yeah, absolutely. What are you most excited for this launch of the campaign in Tokyo? To help society to advance, um, you know, human race. I'm not talking about, you know, only, you know, groups here and there. Globally, using sport is the most exciting thing I would like to be involved in my in my life. 
and the reach and the impact of this campaign could be something that would definitely change uh, the life of 1. billion people. And you know, what else can you want, you want to do in the world? I mean, you know, just to make the the life of people better. And in this case, a more inclusive society. And we know that a more inclusive society is not only about persons with disability. And I think that's the message here. We are all different, but we, we, want, we, want, we need to be given opportunity to be part of the world, to be part of society. That's why I'm super excited about the campaign. Yeah, that's so nice to hear. I know the past year has just opened eyes across the world to the injustices for pretty much every minority group. And I think the world can be changed in a moment, as we saw with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and things like that. But why wait for something horrific to happen? You know, let's start a movement now without having to beg for it and just be inspired by each other, by allies. Why not start a movement like this out of something positive? We don't need to wait until something really negative happens so that we react to it. I know after all, persons with disability are human beings. is a characteristic. You know, you have uh, uh, some people move around in a wheelchair, some people move around with their own legs, some people uh, like you, you know, uh, you, you have an amputation and, and that's it. And that's it. It's a characteristic. We should not. One of the things I think we do as human beings, we label people, you know, the white, the black, the fat, the Brazilian, you know, men. We are human beings, all of us. And that's why we need this campaign now, because what happened during the pandemic helped to highlight that we are treating persons with disability sometimes in many occasions as second class citizens. So we've talked about what the campaign is, what we're excited for. You know, let's get down to brass tacks. What does success look like to you, to the IPC, to the organizations? You know, what does that look like in 2031? I think that the campaign will be successful uh, if when we get to 2030, we look and we don't need to launch uh, with the 15 version 2. Whether we think that we have, you know, we have in some way changed the perception of persons with disability. We, can, we say we have seen in many nations an increase of number of persons with disability in employment, for example. We have seen laws being approved in different nations that will uh, make those societies more inclusive. It's Maybe it's too optimistic because to change the world and in centuries of, of culture in 10 years, maybe it's too optimistic, but it, it's a start and we would do. And if we need to have the, you know, uh, another 10 years, another 10 years, another 10 years, and do a, a campaign that will last for a century, I think it's worth doing it. Because at the moment, we are going backwards. So we need to put society into the right direction at this moment. And that's what, again, we will try to do, and we will do it. Uh, 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 because I believe in the power of sport. I believe in the power of, of bringing people and organizations together. And I think we have assembled an incredible you know, a lineup of organizations and individuals supporting this campaign. So this is a global campaign involving everyone from politicians to celebs to world-renowned athletes, Olympic and Paralympic. Um, how, how can people get involved with this? Well, I think, of course, they can get involved by, you know, following the campaign on social media, following the website and so. But I think it's more than that. We all can play our part in having a more inclusive society. So I like to give this example. If, if you own a restaurant, a very small one, and you have a menu in Braille, you put a ramp in the door, you train your team to welcome persons with disability, you're doing your part. And again, you, we all can get involved in this campaign, or at least in the meaning of this campaign, if we, uh, in our own you know, daily lives, we have a more inclusive attitude. Wow, fantastic, but what am I doing? You know, here in Brasilia, in Brazil, in my example, on my day to day, not only my job as, as president of the IPC, but what am I doing in the day to day? Am I raising my daughter with an inclusive mentality? You know, am I open to, to, to have more persons with disability in my day to day? You know, I think everyone just needs to get started and be an ally. And even if it's just following the campaign or one person with a disability, there's so much information out there too. You know, just taking that upon yourself to educate and um, be a part of this movement is is very uh, is a very good idea. But uh, it was yeah, how you I get think involved. People, you know, when pe when they don't know something, normally they ignore or they are afraid of. So if the, as you mentioned, the information is out there. 
you know, and, and about persons with disability and, and so. So if you read all the stuff, oh, that, yeah, you will understand. But people sometimes, they will not do that. They will not go for that information. So they prefer to, let, oh, I respect them, but, you know, I don't want to get involved. But again, that's, that's what we do with the campaign. We're going after society, after people in different levels, as I mentioned, at a government level, as a you know, civil society level, in the business sector. So we can, yes, put that light that will make people react to it and say, oh, it's not that, it's not that difficult. It's not that big deal. I should not be ignoring them. And, and again, we will do through athletes, through celebs, through, you know, uh, you know, political actions and so on and so on. That, I think that's the beauty of the campaign is this, is this combination of different approaches that we, and that we believe we will get to the entire world because, you know, we are trying to cover all bases here. Yeah. And that's how you have to do it. I love the holistic way that the IPC and everyone involved is going after this. That's really how you create change is just from every level. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to see the opening ceremonies. I know how important that is to athletes just to get inspired and get ready. So um, I think that brings us to the end of this podcast episode. And I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you very much, Anna. It's amazing to see a Paralympian with different skills uh, as an interviewer, as a communication person, as I am. Uh, so it's amazing to see that. I'm, I'm honored to, to work with Paralympians on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, to see you with that. All those skills outside the swimming pool, it's just amazing. Congratulations. A huge thank you to Andrew for taking the time to discuss the campaign. I can't wait to see the global impact that We The 15 will have over the next weeks, months, and years. To find out more about the campaign, simply visit wethe15.org or follow us on social media at We The 15. There's more to come in this special mini series. Next time, Paralympic champion Ellie Cole will be chatting all things We The 15 with the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet. It's not to be missed, so we'll catch you then.